next one's a cylinder. <coughs> it's actually easier, I find it easier to explain and make a, a like a larger cylinder than a small one to start with. By a small cylinder I mean something you make a coffee cup out of. And I'll show you a bit later today, but um, it's actually more complicated to explain all the intricate little moves and and the thing about um, the cylinder is it's so close to the movements of the bowl, they're all, all the same hand movements, the only difference is the position of your wrist that changes, so it's the perfect thing to teach people after they, after they do this one. Because all the moves are already there, it's just have to adjust the pressure and the position of your wrist. Bend on properly. Get that centered, and um, instead of opening up like a bowl where you hold your wrist over there and you get your thumb out, the hitchhiker thumb, actually, pretty well, you want to drill a hole straight down so your, your wrist goes over the over the middle of the wheel. Fire that right thumb in with my left thumb, stop before I get to the bottom. Do you like to leave a fair amount in the base when you do that? Not particularly, I really only want I've got less than a centimetre there, around about a centimetre. Now to open up a cylinder, I don't, um, I'm not going to open it up and leave the base at the same time. What I'll be doing is I'll, I'll focus just on the very tips of those fingers. I'm just going to just tunnel back towards myself. I really don't want to touch any other part of the pot. I'll just tunnel back towards myself. Really easy just to move one fingertip through the clay. And that, that'll undermine it all. And then on the way out, a little bit of pressure on the inside wall and it will open it up. It does more of a two-step thing rather than trying to open it up and leave a flat base at the same time. And the fingertips back to the centre. Consolidate the base. Okay. Now with the bowl, I have my, my left box hand on the side and it was angled out and I have my right duck bill angled across like that and my wrist out here and that's, that was how I made the bowl. It's the same thing but your box hand is in a upright position, vertical and your right wrist is over the middle of the wheel like that. Now it's important for, for this right hand not to actually go looking for any work this right hand is it's, all it is, it's a post that I want to work against. So, in order to be a post, it's just got to stay there and wait for a bit of pressure to arrive at it before it does anything. And it's all up to this left hand to, to squeeze that clay in. So, so once again, like the bowl, my hands haven't really moved up. I haven't gone squeeze up I go. I've stayed down in that, in that position at the bottom and I've, I've just squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. And that's displaced all that clay and it's, it's lifted it all up. Um, then I'll do the same thing. I'll tend to relax the grip so that all the slurry goes back on and they're going to do a, a second little squeeze which just teases the rest of that clay up at the top. It's a really energy efficient move. You're working with the clay coming into you, the clay is not going away from you. Now I get the sponge in front of my fingertips, those two fingertips on the outside so I can, <clears throat> I want to gather up all this, all this clay I've got out on the back here. And against that I use the same fingers on the inside. So push down, in and under, and give that a bit of a pinch. Now I'm going to leave that left hand there because it's in the right position and I'm using the right fingertips. I'm going to switch over to my thumb and knuckle on the outside and I'm going to have this the sponge in the middle there. So it, 
gives me constant lubrication. One of the big things that brings you unstuck is if you're getting halfway through a move and all of a sudden it start, starts to dry up and you hit a dry patch and the whole thing gets a twist in it. So managing the slurry for your whole move is so something I do, the sponge satisfies that. Um, difference too here with the, with the bowl. Um, my wrist was out here when I was doing the move now. It's got to be directly over the middle. Um, Squeeze on the inside, my inside fingers find the tip of that knuckle. Um, as soon as they sit on top, the two have to go up together. This time I've got my, my right elbow <coughs> anchored. I've just got it on my leg here in front of me. And it means you can just, if your elbow's aimed, just draw that line in the air. And that gets you up through this area. Get you there, because you're just pivoting on your elbow. to work. I guess the first rib I pick up would be the one of these wooden ones. Or <coughs> same thing as mouse. I guess that's the better one, the, the wooden mouse rib. And, um, hold it with the curved side up and the pointy bit down. And actually angle it back towards into the clay so it, that, that blade cuts the clay away. Push down the bottom corner. And just take away that, just that little bit of clay at the bottom and clean that all up. Now I'll turn the river around, use the flat side, anchor my elbow here, and I'll bring that in against the side and I'll push right down the bottom corner. Find the rib and my fingertip moves up the side of the rib until it gets to the top of the rib and then the rib and that my fingertip holding that point of pressure just move up at the same rate. So that's the cylinder and introduction to tools. <laughs> Just get to pick a bit of a rib up. Pick in the bottom, but uh, actually the thin bits down there. So once you've got the, the hang of that, you're all covered in mud, you're all stressed out, you all come back. <laughs> the next thing you do is um, turn a cylinder into a, into a vase. <coughs> when the balls of clay start getting a little bigger, um, I tend to go straight to the top and put a bit of a point on them. So that when I do go down and, and bring that clay up, the, I've always got a point at the top. I don't get that crater when you just bring the sides up.
Side. Be careful. That doesn't go again. Okay, so got the base established there. That comes off again. I'll just get some softer clay. Get my fingers behind that sponge, push down, in and under on the outside, squeeze against the thumb and knuckle. Now each move you do, all you're really doing is setting it up for the next move. Make sure I don't leave too much clay at the top so that when I pull it up next time I haven't got too much to wrestle with right up there. I'm going to make a vase on the cylinder so I get a little bit further in under at the outside. So a knuckle. I might even do one more pull after this. I'm not going to take heaps up. And I'm allowing it to spread as well on the inside. quite hard now, I want to get up, get all that clay up this time. The inside fingertip, my index finger is actually pointing back towards me. What you need now, a little just points of pressure. You sort of stop there and some of the fingertips on the inside, look, they're actually pointed back at me. This, this main fingertip here, that the tip of my left index finger, and the, the one next to the long finger, that stays straight. Now that inside index finger just connects directly with that knuckle, and that next finger connects there. So I've got two points there. That This first one is where I really squeeze it hard, and this next one is where I, I steady what I've thrown. And the thumb sits just on top, right where that ridge of clay is. Find if you've got two points on the outside that are squeezing in against one on the inside, it'll give you a, a cylinder to make the clay go up. Whether it's this, sort of using broad areas of your hands or your thumb and knuckle, you find you need those two points on the outside. a little and bring it in. Now I'll use some ribs. I've got the, the 
stainless steel mouse and the stainless steel kidney. I use the kidney on the inside and I hold it on those two fingers and I hang on to it with the thumb and the back of that finger next to it. So it means you can get right down the bottom corner, you can get right up the top, it represents that part of your hand really well and you can hang on to it. Now I always start bellying from the top. I find if I start bellying at the bottom, I lose all my height. And you've got that, um, you're putting a bulge in the bottom and you've got all this weight on top of it and you're only supporting it in one little point, then it kind of it just, it just sinks. It's, um, but if you put that bulge at the top where you don't have that burden of gravity and just chase that bulge down, then you retain most of your height. What I do with the ribs, I position them so they both know where each other are. And then when I want to belly the pot out, I separate them. And when I want to just compress the wall, I bring them together. So, as if I belly this into a spherical form, then I'll start at the top and I'll, I'll separate them. And as I go down, I'll, I'll separate them quite wide. And as I get to the bottom, I'll bring them back together. The important thing is that I've got equal amount of pressure on the inside and outside. If you're only pushing on the inside, then the whole pot just gets pushed over. Um, you've got to have even pressure. The pot's got to stay in the middle of the wheel. Separate them. And I've really separated them through there. down the bottom. And I'll hold, hold that bottom rib steady. And I can go from the bottom to the top without worrying about losing all that height. Sounds a I guess while I can still get under there, I'll probably get the water out. That's the next thing. Um, back to that thing we learned. Um, angle that point back towards me to remove any excess down the bottom. Took that bit of excess away. Now I turn the rib around. I will use that flat side. So that can go right down the bottom corner and support. When I leave the support of the bat, I can come up against that and I can press. I can compress that bottom part of the pot against that rib and get a really solid launch. You know, from a pot. Goodbye. Was it? Yeah. 
here. Just with your fingertip, you press the wall against the against the rib. What I want there is a straight area anyway. Even though I'm trying to make something round, I need straight to you know to lift the whole thing up. It's like when you're turning bowls at that little area, just just the first part of the pot after the foot has actually got to be straight to you know, give the pot some lift. Then I'll drop that that straight, that rigid rib, and I'll I'll pick up one of these flexible ribs because I'm going from that straight area into a curved area. Hold the rib on there, and I'll pick it up from that last point of centre where I left off with the wooden rib. And just with one fingertip on the inside. Anything with not much drag. So, um, I've stopped putting water on the pot a while ago. Um, I like to use um, these ribs. You just got they don't have much drag and they can support quite a large area. Now, if I do need to work on anything up here, then I'll, I'll get the slurry that's collected on my hands. Just make sure I lubricate that one bit I want to work on. The closer you get towards the end of the pot, the more gentle you have to be with the whole thing. A little bit of plastic. Plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Chamois is a bit rough for me. At yeah. least you do with your, whether your finger what you can do with the chamois. Yeah. The plastic gives you that shiny, clean, round finish. something I will, I'll, I'll put it upside down, shave it really clean and get this old rough old earthenware stuff. I hate to go near it with a turning tool. If you can though, you can turn it, but it means you've got to um, you know, compress it all and, and wet it. It doesn't need it, does it? It just doesn't need it. That's cylinder turned into a pot. 
using the ribs. Oh,